During the ordinary time of the year, it's time for us to reflect on who we are before God and what is in our name, because the scriptures tell us that our names are written in the hand of God. Well, in the Old Testament, he called Eli, in the New Testament, Andrew's called, when are you called? This is Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word. Thank you for joining us on the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. God bless you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translates as teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John the Baptist and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother, Simon, and then told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated as the Christ. Then he broke and brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Kephas, which means Peter. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translates as teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John the Baptist and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and then told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated as the Christ. Then he broke and brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Kephas, which means Peter. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is it? Thank you. You gonna sit down or you gonna just stand there? <laughs> I know. I, I don't operate according to like everybody else does, and uh, just doing a little thing different throws everybody off. It's m more than common with me. Sometimes my singing does that, throws everybody off. You know, I sing and all that, and your response comes out as like half-baked, you know, because I threw you off because I don't sing well, so I figure if I can't sing well, you're not going to sing well. No. Um, but that's not unusual with me. Things always happen that way. Uh, that wasn't a bill that she dropped on the floor. It was just a little piece of paper I wanted to keep in here. Names, 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 names. Think of the names. Think of, think of the names that are significant in your life. And, and what is in a name? That's what goes on today in the Holy Scriptures. Think of your own name. Okay, 
Now think of the name of someone you love. Okay. God called you and God called her or him. Just as he calls all of us, just as he called the prophets, just as he called the apostles. So we think of names. We think of, oh my, last night it was, I was in South Jersey with my, my very, very, very good cousin, the matriarch of the family, Carmela. They call, call her Carmi, celebrating 90 years. So the whole clan was there, the family was there, celebrating Carmi, celebrating the fact that this woman, and she's a dynamo woman. She's very, very close to my mother. And, and in my family, we call her my second mother because I lived with them for a year, but I never left them. I, they were South Jersey, and I'm with them all the time. Very celebration. Carmi, a very, very significant name in the family. Think of another name. Think of Aggie. We're praying for her today at Mass, resting with God far too young in her life. Today's the 40th day of her going into heaven. Think of the names of the people in our families, what, what you call your mother, your father, your best friend, your girlfriend or boyfriend, the, the nicknames. And think of the impact of those names as you say them, as you think of them. And that's what's going on in the scriptures today. We have the scriptures are very beautiful today and they're giving us some hints as to how to get to know Jesus a little better. Usually in this cycle, we read the readings of Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the Gospels of Mark. We didn't use that today, we used John today. But Mark talks about Jesus too. And when we look at Jesus in the Gospel of Mark, sometimes like he's a little goofy, you know? Like uh, maybe that time and somebody touched his robe and he looks around, who touched me? And people were crowding in on all sides, and the apostles said, who touched you? He, he didn't, I'm not con con concerned with the question, I'm concerned with the fact that he didn't know who touched him. Mark is often called the gospel of secrets, because very often Jesus will heal someone, and he'll say, don't tell anybody. And of course, those who are healed go and do the opposite, they tell and they broadcast it. So the gospel of Mark gives us a Jesus who sort of comes to understand who he is as the Son of God. Doesn't know it automatically. You know, there's no baptism story in, in Mark. There's no, excuse me, the uh, Bethlehem story in Mark. That doesn't exist. So now we fast forward to this gospel in which another name is given to Jesus. And he's called by the apostles and he's following him, and John the Baptist says, you know, that one is the Lamb of God. Now, they're, they're listening to the Baptist, they're following his teaching, they, they, they know they have to go through repentance, they have to go through a metanoia, a change of heart, and, and they, they look to this one. Historically, Jesus and John the Baptist may have known each other, they were cousins, but we don't know how the continuity of the relationship continued from, from the, the Annunciation and the visitation when Mary went to visit Elizabeth, John's mother, and the baby leaped in her womb. We don't know how close they were, okay? She was in the hill country, Mary was someplace else. But they were cousins. And their name is, an, is important. John wasn't supposed to be called John. His father's name is Zachariah. And in the tradition of Jewish customs, the kid should have been named John, excuse me, Zechariah. But the angel, some messenger of God, told Zechariah to name the kid John. And of course, when he was born, they wrote on, on a tablet, his name will be John. So that we have John the Baptist. Think of what his role is. Every one of us has a role. John the Baptist is meant to do this, to point to Jesus. John the Baptist is meant to introduce him and his disciples to Jesus and, in his own words, sort of descend out of the picture, decline so Jesus could rise up. So every one of us has a name and every one of us is called to do something, not with the alphabetical writing of that name, 
but with the significance of that name. No matter who we are, what our name is, because we have this intimate relationship with God. And, and God, in Mark's Gospel, okay, we're not using it right now, but Mark's Gospel is very educational for that purpose because Jesus learns who his name is, little by little. Everybody says, oh, Jesus knew everything. Jesus didn't know everything. Jesus was a man. He was born a person. Yes, he was God, but only little by little, it seems, in the scriptures, was it revealed to him, we call it the self-consciousness of Jesus, that he was special, that he was the Son of God. So that revelation is very important for us because it's a hint as to us and our role. How do I know who I am and what I am called to do? Listen to the responsorial psalm that we, we sang a few seconds ago. Lord, I am here, I come to do your will. To do your will is my delight. The Lord puts a new song into my mouth. So we're growing in a relationship. And as we grow in a relationship with God, we grow in a relationship with ourselves, and we grow in the relationship with those people around us. Nobody comes to us face value. Think of the first person you, you met who eventually becomes your lover, your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband or wife. How did that start? Sometimes it starts in conflict, sometimes it starts in a, a match, sometimes it starts online, sometimes it starts, who knows, through an occupation. But little by little, the person is revealed as to who he is and who you are. And how does that revelation come across? Through his and her actions. We reveal who we are by our actions. Jesus is there going along the scene. John the Baptist says, that's the Lamb of God. Now, parentheses, Lamb of God, sacrificial Lamb. The Lamb that was brought to the temple and sacrificed to God. And they say, this, it's kind of incongruous. He is God's special chosen one. He's going to reveal us to God and God to us and yet he's going to be a sacrifice? What kind of nonsense is that? But that's what Jeshua is all about. That's what the name Jesus is all about. He's savior of his people. And through his life, those public years that we know of Jesus on the scene, he reveals who he is to his people as God reveals to him who he is, savior of his people. You will name him Jesus because he'll be savior of his people, the angel says to Mary. So again, the disclosure, the, the unveiling. Yes, I know, very often, too many times in our lives, people that we know intimately by name and by relationship disappoint us. Very important for us to analyze what attracted me to him or her, what brought us together. Is that so gone into the past and vague now that I can't remember it? have too many barriers built up between me and her or me and him that I, I can't see who the person was that I fell in love with, that I first worked with, that I first met in my neighborhood. Think about, again, think about that significant name and think about what Jesus had to do. That name, Jesus, denied, I don't know him, betrayed with a kiss, and that Jesus gives us an example of what it means to be an unfolding son or daughter of God. It means love. It means forgiveness. It means not holding revenge. It means going on and carrying forward with our message. And again, sometimes we, we, have to be, we have to be adults to realize a lot of this, but in the temple, Eli was the, the, the prophet, the priest in charge. Samuel was his little uh, associate, like an altar boy, but they never altars like that. But he was sleeping in another room, you heard the scriptures, and, and the, the story goes that Sam hears his name. Yo, Sam! And he runs up and sees the, the prophet, and he says, did, did you call me? No, 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 go back to sleep. It's okay. Goes back to sleep, another room, again he hears his name, Samuel! Gets up, runs up. No, it wasn't me, I didn't call you. 
Then Samuel, in his insight, and this is for all of us, it's not just prophetic, insight, discernment. How do I discern the will and the message of God in my life? It's not up to me. I have to use what I have. I have my brains, I have my history, I have who my, my personality, I have who I am. But slowly that gets revealed to me, and I have to use all of that in concert with my faith in God to learn what my role is in life. I don't care how bright or how uneducated a person is. We're all called to be the best potential of who we are based on our own full integrity, faith, brains, personality, family life. So he goes back and he says to, to young Samuel, listen, you don't know this yet, but God might be calling you. Yeah, yeah, right, calling me. Don't worry. Go to sleep. And if you hear the voice again, just respond. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. I'm listening. And he goes to sleep. And the voice of God calls him again. Samuel. And Samuel follows the Lord. He receives his inspiration. Again, go back to the names of the people you love. How just that first meeting could have been shaky or love at first sight. It doesn't matter. But it developed. Samuel's relationship to God, the same thing develops. And we hear from the scriptures, everything he said, Samuel said, was significant. No word of his was unnoticed. Just, just to fast forward, he's also the one who eventually will anoint David as king of Israel. So this guy was very, very significant in scripture. Very significant. But it started out sleeping on the floor in the next to the chapel of the, of the Ark of the Covenant. So what does that mean for us? Judging or not judging? Little kids, big kids, doesn't matter. Looking at the whole person that we meet when we meet someone in our lives. And that's also the way we meet God. None of us have a, like a 100% record with God. Not everything we've ever asked for is responded to by God the way we wanted it. That's all right. But well, we got to get used to that. Look at Jesus. Nothing he, shouldn't say nothing, very often what he asked for, it looked like it wasn't being responded to by his father. But he did. His greatest gift and his greatest message back to him was resurrection. To save Jesus from all, all the tortures that he experienced and to resurrect him, showing that his son is more powerful in the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ as the history may have shown it from the eyes of the public, the Romans, the, the people of Jerusalem. So today I want to ask all of us, what's in a name? And who's the person I love? Who's the person I share that name with? And how deep is the relationship between myself and that person? And let's go one step further and more direct What's my relationship with God? God called every one of us. I don't care what your name is, how you were baptized, where you were baptized. God called every one of us to be members of his family. And as we unravel each day of our lives, I don't care if we're senior citizens or grammar school children, each day of our lives can be a revelation as to what God is saying to us. And don't forget, doesn't say the same thing to everybody. Andrew was called to follow Jesus. That, that's the one. Go follow him. What does Andrew do? He gets his brother and he follows Jesus with his brother. And what does Jesus do as he turns back and looks at Simon, his brother, says, You're Simon? From now on, Kephos will be your name. Rock. He meets Jesus, and Jesus challenges him to be the rock. And you know the story of Peter. Is he the rock right through his life? No. There's an old story my grandmother used to tell. This is the gospel according to Rosalia. She used to tell a story about St. Peter. 
it had to do with St. Peter, and she always associated it with, with uh, gluttony. I'll tell you why. So, you know, you cut a piece of bread, I'll take the big piece. You pour a glass of soda, I'll take the full glass. Piece of steak, I want the big piece. Okay. So one day my grandmother says, you know, Jesus gathered all 12 of his disciples, and they were hungry. Morte di fame. They were dying of hunger. They were out in the desert. So he says to them, go get a rock. Go, go get something. Bring it back. Oh, this, is, this is apocalypse. This is not gospel. This is gospel according to Rosalia. Sicilian gospel. She, he, she said, uh, Jesus says, bring the rock here and line them up, and I'll, I'll bless them. Okay? I don't even know if Jesus knew what a blessing was. But, but I'll bless them, and I'll make them bread. Oh. So Andrew gets a rock, and James gets a rock, and this one gets a rock. They're all lined up in front of Jesus. Where's Peter? He's rolling in a boulder, right there, rolling in a boulder, big rock. And what does Jesus say to him? He gets all the bread from the 11, and to Peter he says, Mo asetete, now sit on it. It's a rock, and that's what it's going to stay. Greed. But characteristic of Peter, the loudmouth, the one who spoke without thinking sometimes. The one who said, I'll stand by you until you, I'll forever, yeah, okay. I don't know the guy, St. Peter. I don't know the guy, never met him. Your language is, uh, no, not me, that's Jesus, not me, not me. So again, the name is a challenge to grow into. Again, think of your name and think the message, my name given to me by God and my family heritage is my challenge to grow into, to be more responsive to God's will in my life as he unfolds it, one surprise after another.